Today on The Younger You, we're talking all about stress and how the adrenal gland actually plays a big part of it in our body, here on The Younger You. I'm on top of the world, now I'm living. And the good just gets better, keeps on giving. Not even close to the end, it's just beginning. Life is getting lighter while the days are getting brighter, yeah. And if the good, I won't even worry anymore. To call my care, still can kick them all out the door. Go on a try, come and tell me what you're waiting for. Move and keep them going till your life is overflowing, yeah. Welcome to The Younger You. Well, what are adrenal glands? You may have heard of them, but similar to the thyroid, you don't know much about what they actually do. Well, right now I'll be talking to Dr. Red about the adrenal glands, what they are and how they go beyond fight or flight. Welcome, Dr. Red. How are you? Thanks for having me. All right. I know it's a crazy question, but what is the adrenal gland? So the adrenal glands are glands that sit above the kidneys and there are stress glands. So if we are overly stressed, then cortisol will increase. If we are, uh, have other conditions or problems, they could be decreased, and that could affect our metabolism, that could affect our total health, that could affect our immune system, lots of stuff. So. Okay, so how does the stress actually affect the gland? The biggest part is when we live these chronic stress lives, that will cause the adrenal glands to produce cortisol. And if we're chronically stressed, or uh, if we're not sleeping at nights, or if we work night shifts, these glands will not produce cortisol like it should, and that can affect tons of different things. That can end up um, causing insulin resistance, poor circulation, all sorts of stuff. So not having enough cortisol does those things to the body, or you need more to Well, it depends. Too much stress can end up causing adrenal problems and adrenal fatigue and things like that as well. And if the adrenal glands can't produce the proper cortisol like it should, it can end up causing a slew of hormonal problems. It can end up causing low blood pressure, all sorts of things. I mean, if you can imagine low blood pressure, for example, will end up causing these patients to not get the proper nutrients and oxygen to the brain. So uh, it can affect lots of problems. Okay, chronic stress is different to normal stress. How does that affect the, the adrenal gland? Well, if people have this prolonged amount of stress, then the adrenal glands just can't produce the cortisol like it should and can end up causing lots of problems and, and lots, of, lots of issues there. Okay, we've, we've talked to you before about Hashimoto's and low thyroid. Yeah. How is that connected to the adrenal gland? One, if somebody has high cortisol, then high cortisol has been seen to actually flare up the autoimmune disease, so flare up the Hashimoto's. Okay. And this can create a ton of different symptoms and a ton of different problems. Cortisol also affects blood sugar levels as well. So when somebody has low cortisol, they might have what's called the reactive hypoglycemia, to where the patient, every time they eat a meal, uh, they'll produce an insulin surge. And that insulin surge is known to flare up the Hashimoto's and autoimmunity as well. So. Uh, it really, really uh, plays a big role with patients suffering with low thyroid. Also with low thyroid, uh, patients with cortisol deficiencies and problems will have what's called an underconversion problem of the thyroid too. The research is showing that inactive T4 hormones can't convert into active T3 hormones, so they can end up having lots of thyroid symptoms on top so of that. So what you're saying is to have a more stress-free life? Yes, relax. Right. Dr. Red Kerr is one of your patients over at the Red River Health and Wellness, and she's been suffering from Hashimoto's. Let's take a quick look. Um, my name is Kara Stosich, and I'm 28 years old. I started having symptoms uh, back in high school. I didn't realize it was related to um, my thyroid disease at the time. Uh, I just knew I didn't feel good. So I went into the doctor, and I was... Uh, I was told that I had depression or anxiety or ADD or whatever it was and um, these symptoms kept escalating um, all the way into my adult years. After I got pregnant, um, the symptoms became even, even worse and, um, and I kept telling people I just felt so exhausted and people kept telling me, oh you're a new mom, you know, like this is normal. And so I doubted myself for a while. I just had had enough so I went in and saw a doctor and um, didn't just you know accept that I was depressed didn't just accept that I had anxiety you know I said you know it's more than that let's let's get some tests run um, I don't know what it is but I just feel like it's something more so anyway they ran a thyroid test and um, come to find out I had low thyroid and so we got on um, some medication for that and you know, I started feeling better, and over a couple months, th things did get better, and then, and then I got back to where I was before, and it was just so discouraging, because because I finally I had some hope, and then it was taken away again, you know? So, 
um, after a year of being on the medication, I was like, you know what, I gotta figure this out. I need to find a specialist. So that's when I found Red River Health and Wellness. So anyway, I, <laughs> near the end of that appointment, I was just left in tears. I was just so relieved that somebody could, you know, somebody heard me. And, um, and I knew that he cared too. And I knew that he wanted to figure out what was going on. Um, he was convinced something was going on. And, and to know that my doctor was behind me felt really good. I was relieved that it wasn't all in my head, you know? So anyway, I'm just, I was just really grateful at that moment. I was like, wow, okay, so I wasn't just crazy. I know something's going on, so let's work on this. And, uh, and so that's where the journey began. After the break, Dr. Red is taking over the younger you set as he interviews Dr. McLean to learn more about the adrenal glands. And then later we'll be checking in with the conclusion of Kara's story. From a tummy tuck to cool sculpting and more, it's time for another giveaway. Enter for the chance to win $1,500 towards any procedure performed by Dr. James Clayton. Head over to the younger you forward slash contest to enter. There's plenty of things that cause stress in my life, things that range from family all the way to schoolwork, definitely a job and trying to pay for school as well. Um, definitely having two majors, being married, running around, financial issues, especially with student loans and the interest rates going up. So yeah, those are my st primary stressors. Uh, what causes stress in my life would be when everything happens the same week. So I've got finals week. I've got a date planned, I want to hang out with my friends, my family wants me to come over. So for some reason those seem to all happen in the same week and that's when I get stressed, is when it all happens in the same week. Uh, stress is caused by circumstances that I can't really control, you know, whether it's financial means, whether it's schooling, and whether it's just like a lack of time to get things done. I'd say that I manage my stress decently. I can definitely um, get around it and like get through my normal day activities without having too much stress that it overwhelms me. Especially if I don't keep my blood sugar kind of level and stable, I, I get really stressed out because I'll have a ton of energy and then by the end of the day it's gone, so I'm trying to stay awake in my last class. And everything is just always on top of you all the time, but it's okay, it's part of life. We're here with Dr. McLean, an endocrinologist at University of Utah Healthcare. Dr. McLean, thanks for joining us. Oh, thank you. My pleasure. So we're here to talk about the adrenal glands. Tell me, what are the most common symptoms that you see as an endocrinologist of patients that are suffering with adrenal problems? Well, you can have both destruction of the adrenal gland or an overactive adrenal gland, and that in turn can be a tumor on the adrenal making too much of the products or the brain overstimulating yeah. it, the pituitary tumor uh, causing that. So when you don't have enough of the adrenal hormones and, and those are the main ones uh, affected are two. One is cortisol yep. and the other is uh, our mineralocorticoids. So one uh, affects more metabolism, one affects your salt balance. If you take out the adrenal glands, you have troubles with both. But the symptoms of not having enough adrenal uh, uh, hormone would be um, weakness, weight loss, tiredness, dizziness, uh, sometimes even fainting upon standing. And that's low cortisol. That would be low. Yep. And then if you're losing also the mineralocorticoid, that, that uh, salt balance hormone, you will also have disturbances of sodium and potassium that can cause problems. Yeah. And so then on the other side of the uh, spectrum, if you have too much cortisol, um, uh, the opposite of many of the things uh, I said happen. So you'll get obesity, but generally just more obesity of the trunk. And in fact, your muscles will wither away. It'll be kind of like yeah. toothpicks and a big ball of clay uh, uh, kind yeah. of uh, physiology. And then cortisol also can suppress your immune system in excess. It can also alter For your sure. metabolism. What do you see as linked to Hashimoto's and adrenal problems? Um, well, when you have one autoimmune problem, you're more likely to have another. And yeah. in fact, the, the coincidence of adrenal uh, uh, autoimmune destruction and thyroid autoimmune destruction is common enough it even got its own name, Schmidt's syndrome. Yeah. 
so we do see those occurring uh, together. Yeah. Uh, uh, so Great. Why would you say adrenal problems are so hard to diagnose? It, it just seems like we'll have patients with significant adrenal problems, uh, and yet diagnosing Addison's or diagnosing other autoimmunity to the adrenal glands is just seems to be really difficult. Well, part of the reason is these hormones, uh, not just cortisol, but also thyroid hormone, mm -hmm. affect so many aspects of the body that the symptoms are very nonspecific. Yeah. So a little weight gain or weight loss or feeling tired or feeling anxious, that can be a million things. Yeah. It usually is not going to be a thyroid or adrenal problem, yeah. but it can be. The other problem is that with that, in terms of cortisol, because you have that, that uh, circadian, circadian rhythm, rhythm. Mm -hmm. uh, of cortisol, it really depends on when you measure it during the day. So yeah. you have to do measures that uh, take into account that. And so sometimes For we have sure. to do a full 24 hour collection uh, to be sure that it's an yeah. adrenal, because at any given point you, you, don't, you might yeah. be low or high or not know. Yeah. Now there's lots of people that will do saliva testing with cortisol mm -hmm. and they'll check their saliva throughout the full day measuring that circadian rhythm. What is the difference between testing with the saliva and testing with the, the blood chemistry? The blood test and then the urine test, which actually sort of integrates a whole 24 hours yeah. worth of secretion, are really uh, the, the best studied and the, the most validated. The salivary test has only been around for uh, a few years, maybe a decade, a little over a decade. Um, and so it's not as thoroughly studied, but the advantage is clearly it's a lot easier to do. Great. Well, Dr. McLean, I met with lots of endocrinologists. I've, I deal with lots of endocrinologists, and you know your stuff. I, I appreciate you coming and, and sharing your knowledge with us. It's been great. Perhaps you're feeling overwhelmed by your daily to-do list. When we come back, we will be finding out ways to reduce what we all have, stress. Like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter for updates on the show and join the Younger You conversation. Chronic stress can really affect a person's quality of life. Well, we need to find out a few ways so you at home can reduce the amount of stress in your life. I'm here at the Mindfulness Clinic at the University of Utah Counseling Center. I'm here with Dr. Lauren Weitzman. We're going to talk about the effects that stress has on the body and what we can do about it. Dr. Weitzman, thanks for having us. Absolutely. So what are the most common things that cause stress in people's lives? You know, the definition of stress is kind of the day-to-day -day wear and tear that just living has on our bodies and our hearts and our minds. Um, so common stresses, I think, are just na navigating stresses at work, how do I balance my work responsibilities with my family and other life roles, just keeping up with the pace of technology. I mean, we live in a pretty fast-paced world and I do think it um, has a wear and tear. So what do you do to help patients reduce stress? Mm -hmm. Well, first of all, it's important just to understand where the stress is coming from. And so we will, you know, talk with them and get a sense of what they're grappling with in their day-to-day -day lives. And then it's important for each person to have a sense of where their particular kind of um, tender points around stress. So some of us feel it, let's say, more in our bodies. So we yeah. may get headaches or stomach ache. Others may get really irritable or grumpy or even angry or perhaps depressed or just lose a lot of you know pleasure in doing daily activities. So first is helping people understand where the stress is coming from. And then we offer all sorts of um, strategies that we think really yeah. work. Yeah. In order to deal with my stress, I try to um, compartmentalize things and make sure that like, I set aside time for this, time for work, time for bills, just to make sure that I don't go crazy. Um, what helps me the most is to go exercise. So if I go on a run or go to the gym or go to the pool. I go rock climbing. I find hobbies that overall reduce stress and don't take a lot of my time or don't require a lot of my time. Uh, exercise. Um, I take Zumba classes here and I just try and eat healthy and get enough sleep. So I go running. That's what I'm about to go. I'm going to go running right now, get a little exercise, get those endorphins up and I'll be a little happier. 
So describe to us what mindfulness is, right? It's a mindfulness clinic. Yep. What is it? What does well, that mean? Mindfulness is actually a practice that's been around for thousands of years, but has really taken hold here in the United States, I don't know, over the past several decades. And it's a new way of practicing awareness and kind of sitting with one's self and one's thoughts. Um, up on the wall here, we have the three principles of mindfulness that we use, um, awareness, present and non-judgment. So what that means is I need to learn how to kind of expand my awareness about what I'm experiencing in any given moment. So that would be what I'm feeling in my body, yeah. the thoughts that I'm having running through my head. But I try just to notice those mm -hmm. in a more neutral kind of observing way. Yeah. We so quickly start to judge our thoughts or worry about our thoughts and the next thing you know we're kind of worrying about what's going to happen. Several days from now we're kind of obsessing about something that happened in the past. So the way I think about mindfulness, it's kind of a way of gently resting our awareness on our bodies, and that is typically on our breathing, but also noticing thoughts and trying to just um, send them on their way without getting stuck in kind of more of a self-critical or self-judging way. Yeah. So we hear about breathing techniques mm -hmm. a lot, right? When yeah. somebody's stressed, we talk about breathing techniques, and, and that really helps mm -hmm. patients. How long does it take for a patient to, to really learn the breathing techniques? You know, it's really easy to learn as a as a matter of fact, on our website, we have like five minute guided meditations that people can do. It's really just getting some instruction about how to focus on breath and really also change the way that we breathe. A lot of us breathe really shallowly, yeah. like from our upper chest, yeah. and we forget that a good deep breath needs to come really from the belly. And it's slowing that down. It's just finding a quiet space, which can be challenging for lots of people, and just taking a few minutes just to gently notice breathing kind of as we inhale and as we exhale. Yeah. Does it matter if we inhale through our nose or mouth? I think what's most important is that you take deep, slower breaths, but you have to kind of ease into it. Sometimes when we start a mindfulness practice, we think, oh my gosh, I yeah. have to do this exactly yeah, right. Sure. But the reality is we just start where just we're at. Just simply find a quiet place and breathing deeply mm -hmm. is, is Yeah, what beneficial. you're doing is invoking the relaxation response, which it counteracts kind of that fight or flight yep. stress reaction. And response, so betcha. we find that just focusing on breath is a great way to do that. Great. So one thing I've learned from you is the mind, body, and soul, really those three that if we can connect and get functioning well, then we'll have a lot better stress-free life. Is that, is that what, I'm, what we're getting at? Yeah, I do believe that. And I think that's not an easy task, but I think practices such as mindfulness practices or deep breathing yeah. can help align our minds and bodies and souls. And I think when we're feeling more connected with ourselves, when we take some time just to slow down, then that just all kind of comes together in a way for that sure. we can feel more moments of peace and ease. So Dr. Weitzman, thanks so much for having us today. We've learned what functions the adrenal glands have in our bodies and ways to manage the stress. But what can happen if a person is suffering from low adrenal gland function? Check out the Younger You website to watch full episodes of the show, read about our product of the week, and get useful tips and tricks to help you achieve the Younger You. Josh, what kind of diseases can affect the adrenal glands? Anyone that might have Hashimoto's disease, for example, mm. can also end up having adrenal problems too. So when you have one autoimmune condition, it can likely turn into another autoimmune condition. I want to talk to you about Addison's disease. What is it? Addison's disease is an autoimmune disease that attacks the adrenal glands. Oh. Almost like Hashimoto's where it destroys the thyroid tissue, but Addison's will actually destroy the adrenal tissue and destroy that tissue enough to where it can't produce the proper cortisol like it should. Okay. okay. And these types of patients will end up being fatigued, feeling like they're going to pass out, have really, really low blood sugar levels. They'll also have really low blood pressure as well. And so these patients will be really fatigued, not knowing what in the world's going on with them. And in reality, they end up having uh, you know, antibodies or their immune system attacking the glands themselves. Okay. Genetic? It can be. What can you do to help someone with Addison's disease? Well, here's the thing. <coughs> someone that has Addison's disease, we have to work and co-manage with an endocrinologist like, like uh, you know, Dr. McLean. But what we'll do is we'll go in and try to work on the autoimmune condition itself. So we'll try to figure out and identify the autoimmune triggers that are going to flare it up and try to calm down the immune system and, and really work with the immune system in great detail. Can you cure it? Can't cure it. When you have an autoimmune At condition. At all? No. 
No, when you have an autoimmune condition, you're going to have it for the rest of your life. It's so just how you're going to manage it. Exactly. So it all comes down to lifestyle like yet again. Lifestyle and nutrition is huge, but also you, you can't just not take medications uh, if, if they're needed. And so making sure that you're co-managing with someone like Dr. McLean is crucial. Um, but really teaching and educating these patients mm. is so, so important. Making sure they know how to keep things in check and keep things calmed down and, and all that as well. Dr. Red, I want to check back in with Karen, see what you did to help her problems as well. Let's take great. a look at this. We had to figure out what was going on in my body that was making it react and attack my thyroid. I found out I was sensitive to um, cashews, almonds, which I thought were health foods. I was eating them all the time before then. No, I was, I'm really sensitive to those, I'm sensitive to wheat, eggs, you know, all, all kinds of different things that I thought I was being healthy and eating. You know, where I am now is so much better than where I was before. And, and I'm not perfect, you know, I'm not, I haven't figured it all out. I still have some bad days, but you know what, I have a lot more good days. So before going through the program, I, I, I felt really discouraged. Honestly, I had been through, I had been through multiple doctors. I had um, tried all kinds of different things. Um, to get my health to where it needed to be and um, just to have the knowing of, of what this is 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 just empowering it's it's exciting I mean I I feel like I'm more in control like I I have a path that I can take to my ideal health and wellness whereas before I didn't know what I was doing you know I didn't know I didn't know what my body was doing I was I was insecure and I felt, I felt worried that I wouldn't ever figure it out and um, now I feel, I feel like there's hope. I know I still have some work to do because it's a process and sometimes it can, it can take a couple years to really get um, all the stuff that you've accumulated in your body out of it and just get yourself back to a balanced state and like learn how to manage your stress and everything but I feel like I've learned a lot of tools um, to take with me and I've learned habits and I've taken on a whole new way of of living and thinking about things you know so after I gave birth I uh, just felt the exhaustion come on really heavy and uh, you know there were days where I I couldn't even keep up with my son and, and as he got into his toddler years and became more and more um, wild and excited about life, I wanted to be there with him and I just didn't feel like I, I didn't feel like I could, you know? Like I felt depleted some days. I mean, some days I did just want to lie in bed and it was just such a relief to get some of that energy back once I went through Red River and started eating the things I needed to, I, I started having more energy again and that's, I mean, that's where I'm at now. I feel like, you know, I can really be there for him. I can, I can be an active, fun mom, the mom that I want to be. Dr. Red, thank you so much. And I know you help so many people with this and you've also helped me as well. So thank you so much. Everyone has a little bit of stress in their lives, but it's about being able to manage that stress and not overworking the adrenal glands. It is important to find a stress reducing method that works for you. And if you think you have any of the signs and symptoms that we talked about, perhaps you have low adrenal gland function. Talk to your doctor and get back to feeling like yourself again. For more information about the show, please head over to our website at theyoungeryou.tv and I'll see you next week. Coming up next week on The Younger You, we'll meet Dr. Gordon, who is putting Matthew through a 21-day whole food cleanse. The Younger You set provided by Madison McCord Interiors.